Hey everyone. So lately I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys to try breeding glow light tetras. Honestly, I've heard about these tetras before, but I've never actually had the chance to keep them myself. I always thought they looked pretty ordinary. Compared to the vibrant colors of cardinal tetras and neon tetras, The only standout feature is that red stripe running across their bodies, which is why we affectionately call them red light tube fish in Chinese. Since I've had some recent failures in breeding neon tetras, I thought it would be a good idea to try breeding a different fish to regain some confidence. Glow light tetras are quite common in our local market. and I was even able to find mature ones ready for breeding. To avoid unnecessary in breeding, I purchased six from one source, and another six from a different source. Just by looking at their size, I knew they were ready to start breeding at any moment. Seeing their behavior, which is similar to Neon Tetras, I decided to give the plastic jar method a try, and see if it works for them too. It's really easy to tell the difference between male and female glow light tetras. The females have a bigger, rounder body. And the males have a smaller and slimmer body shape. Compared to neon tetras, glow light tetras are less domesticated. When I catch neon tetras in a net, they usually don't struggle much. While glow light tetras keep jumping around, and I have to use my hand to cover them. Otherwise, they might end up jumping right onto the table like this one. I forgot to mention, for breeding, I use water from the local stream where, I previously bred neon tetras. The water has a pH of around 7, and the general hardness is 0. At first glance, it seems like I haven't noticed any eggs. After careful observation, I noticed that there are a few eggs in one of the jars that have turned white. This made me realize that this breeding method is also suitable for glow light tetra. So, two days later, I made a second attempt. Finally, I found many eggs in one of the jars. Getting the glow light tetra eggs for the first time. It was hard for me to tell which ones were fertilized and which ones were not. And because the breeding water wasn't very clean. Combined with the stickiness of the eggs. Many of them got covered in mud, making it even more challenging for me to distinguish them. Since it was my first time breeding them, I didn't really focus on the quantity. So I randomly selected a few of them. I put approximately 100 eggs that I believed to be fertilized into a small container for hatching. And I added a bit of methylene blue to the water. For the hatching water, I used the same tank water as before. But the results of the hatching on the second day were not ideal. I noticed that most of them were deformed. Only three of them were healthy, and this is one of them. Just like neon tetras, once they reach the free swimming stage, they can easily consume baby brine shrimp, making it effortless to raise them to adulthood. About a week ago, I attempted breeding for the third time. 
and this time I collected around 250 fertilized eggs. I divided them into groups of 50 and placed them in 5 separate small containers. Unlike the previous batch, I didn't add methylene blue this time. However, the hatching rate and survival rate were much better compared to the last attempt. Wait, why does it look like an umber tetra? 